I'm Jeff Friedinger. I'm the Vice Provost for Global Affairs, and let me begin first by thanking you for your patience. Um, it is a great honor and privilege for us to host the delegation here in the city of Seattle, to host a delegation from Shenzhen, uh, a delegation which includes uh, tonight's uh, distinguished speakers, Wang Shu, uh, chairman of the Wang Ku com uh, China Company, uh, as well as uh, Wang Jian, uh, a, a UW alum uh, and uh, chairman of BGI. Uh, it's also a pleasure to welcome Conrad Lee, mayor of the city of Bellevue. We're honored by your presence and we're honored by all of you taking time out of busy academic and uh, professional schedules to join us here in the Paul G. Allen Center for Computer Science and Engineering. This evening's conversation is about mountaineering and adventure. But this notion of adventure is not possible without a drive for discovery and a love of the wilderness. These are defining features of what it means to be a citizen of the Pacific Northwest and of the UW. Here in the Puget Sound region, our communities are rich in natural resources and we have a deep and abiding respect for the environment. These values are reflected as well in our scholarly work, whether it is our Arctic Studies Initiative or faculty who aim to balance the natural world with the built environment. The University of Washington finds solutions to some of the world's most challenging problems in order to do a world of good. The drive for discovery and research for new frontiers, meanwhile, can be seen in the innovation ecosystem that's unique to this part of the world. UW itself is ranked in the top five in the nation for startup productivity, and there's an entrepreneurial culture that permeates our campus. The format for this evening will involve a reflection on these themes from the chairman, followed by a fireside chat with Jim Whitaker and Wang Jian. Jim is known to many of you already. He is a beloved figure in our community and is best known as the first American to summit Mount Everest. He also successfully led the Seattle-based REI company as its president until his retirement. And Jian, I am proud to say, is one of the UW's own. After his medical education, he's gone on to establish the largest genome sequencing company in the world, BGI. And like our other two guests, Jian shares the distinction of summiting Mount Everest. Our keynote speaker is an international champion of environmental sustainability. He leads by example. His company, Vanke, has influenced corporate business practices in China and literally around the globe. He has been called the model of corporate social responsibility. He is also an accomplished athlete and outdoorsman someone the UW community can learn a lot from. Before I invite him to the stage, I'd like to briefly thank the Washington State China Relations Council and the Trade Development Alliance of Greater Seattle for their partnership and support of our relationships with the city of Shenzhen and their responsibility in hosting the Shenzhen delegation today. We're also grateful to the UW China Entrepreneur Network whose student members worked hard helping to plan and publicize this event. They also, also got up early today, not always a natural thing for students, um, in the middle of midterms to work as volunteer ambassadors and translators for our visitors. Thank all of you. So without further delay, I'd like to welcome our distinguished guest to the podium, Mr. Wang Xu. We are honored to welcome you to the University of Washington. You want to jump off. <laughs> oh, too many students. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, may privilege to stand here and give a speech. And uh, I wonder if I speak uh, in Chinese or in English. Uh, how many stu Chinese students? Uh, oh, uh, okay. 
But I think maybe give, <laughs> give me an uh, opportunity or give me a chance uh, training speak in English. Uh, my speech is the, uh, that the title that the Brotherhood. At uh, the day, my brother also attend uh, in here. That also we also that uh, family name Wang. My Wang Shi. My brother Wang Jian. <laughs> so that uh, the big brotherhood. And uh, several of the story. First story that the Guinea pig at the first story. Second story that the police give me 20 minutes. And uh, third story that the, uh, who admire who? <laughs> and the last one that the death. Let me begin the first story that happened in 2003. At that time uh, in my life, that's uh, a very important uh, a year. Also, as the Chinese, because that year happened an uh, incident in China. Who that uh, can Recommend what happened that year? The SARS, yes. <laughs> that SARS. That SARS for me, that I climbed the mountain Everest. And I remembered that it's uh, May 20, 22nd. At that time, nearly at the, uh, 1 p.m. I almost uh, closed the, the summit of Mount Everest, but I felt uh, exhausted, nearly could not that move my feet. Uh, that guide that uh, told me, excuse me, your, your oxygen that uh, already empty. So, will you still climb up again? I think nothing. Only handle the summit. That meaning, go again, go up again. And uh, not more than 200 meters long distance I used two hours. That means nearly close 3 p.m. we last uh, ascent the summit. At the summit only I spent uh, not more 10 minutes we made it down. And uh, I very difficult because uh, exhausted. And suddenly, suddenly I felt very comfortable, very comfortable. You my feeling, my feeling that uh, in some sign bus, very comfortable, I went, stopped, and uh, sit down and close eyes. But other voice said, no, don't stop. If you stop, sit down. Maybe you cannot stand again. So, but I'm feeling that the very words, something like some sign to you, something like a uh, very sweet, then feeling something like a 
a leg already into the door, that's the heaven door. Very, very that uh, wonderful feeling. You don't want to move. But uh, I keep moving. Then I went down at the, to the base camp. I talked my feeling at that uh, special attitude. The, the doctor of my team told me that feeling, something like a nearly death feeling. And uh, all, of course, uh, that experience, not my feeling that something nearly into the heaven. That, the fa that uh, fact, I climbed up on the summit of uh, Everest. So I became a hero. And uh, I didn't know at that time someone noticed uh, my experience. That one was Wang Jian. Why he noticed me and uh, interest uh, in my experience? Because that uh, a long time I knew that. The, um, the fact he noticed me, he at that time was uh, studying, researching about the situation of nearly death. So he noticed me, that special experience. Not more than three months, then I the heart uh, went back. Beijing, I met uh, Dr. Wang Jian, and um, we admire each other. And uh, at that time, he preferred that uh, climb the mountain. So in his mind, at that time, I was, uh, I was a hero. And of course, in my mind, he also was a hero because his uh, scientist research that uh, advanced. At that time, that he organized uh, uh, his company, that name BGI, uh, took part in that very that famous that project that uh, uh, human, human genomic what is the name? Human Geno Geno Project. And, uh, and then they together protect, uh, that, um, climb the mountain. He asked me, do you want as the, uh, that uh, uh, Guinea pig? I said, what, what do you mean? He said, because that, uh, he explained it to me. That's, uh, he was working on a research project about uh, near-death experience. Usually, near-death experience is studied when the body is under critical medical conditions. But the problem is that very rarely does the person come back to life and describe the experience. So high altitude mountain climbing would be an ideal case for near death study. <laughs> I, I understand what meaning I say, okay? I went uh, as uh, your Kenya pig. <laughs> at the beginning, that's the first story. Uh, that's uh, that uh, five years later, 
that's the in 2000 and A. Um, Wang Jian, my brother, and me, we together organized a team, climbed the mountain, that mountain Shishabama. Uh, that, uh, I, that altitude high, more high than the 8,000 meters. That's the fourth, the highest mountain in the world. And um, one of the team members, that's uh, uh, Wang Jian's the assistant, that's uh, Chen Fang, that's the female. Uh, he responsibility for that uh, project. Uh, also, not only me as the junior pick, also Wang Jian. They also are uh, that's uh, that's a uh, junior pickers. And. Um, that uh, his assistant uh, took everyone's blood uh, samples for five times at different uh, altitudes, first in Beijing, then Lhasa, and the base camp, and then climbed on the middle of the mountain, even on the summit, then went down to the base camp, even immediately took the blood. That, uh, as, we, as we know, that this dog, that the blood sample, that is not easy that in that situation. But not more difficult that how it took the blood, transport the blood to the Beijing for analyzed. But that's uh, the team of the Wang Jians, uh, the uh, researching team, they are very successful down that. And um, good news that uh, as the analyze uh, that um, the public, that, uh, that article, uh, Wang Jian's uh, assistant that uh, won a national award for her doctoral dissertation that in 2008, that uh, as, as I say, that is our first story, uh, junior uh, pigs. Second story, please give me 20 minutes. That uh, this is a story that uh, only after two years, that uh, 2010, that time, we uh, organized uh, a team, attend an international that, uh, climate team. Uh, we organized teams at uh, six uh, members, uh, took part organ and organized by another team. Together, that's uh, 18 members that uh, organized uh, uh, by uh, New Zealand that uh, culture and uh, 18 members, including uh, six Chinese people. That uh, six Chinese people include me, also include uh, uh, my brother, Wang Jian, and also including his assistant that uh, now already is a PhD that the Chen Fang. That means that three of six Chinese people who came from Shenzhen. Yeah. Oh, that, uh, yeah, that, that four, that four, four people, four members that uh, of uh, six that uh, who came from Shenzhen. I, I, 
Excuse me, I, 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 for, I forgot you. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> why, why you let me? Give me, give me a chance, right? Um, maybe then uh, Q and A. I speak uh, Chinese, right? Uh, <laughs> that um, long short, long uh, long story short to say. <laughs> <laughs> The night, the night before we made the final attempt to summit Mount Everest, Dr. Dr. Wang, Dr. Wang Jian came to me and asked, "Tomorrow, when we get to the peak, can you let me go there first for 20 minutes before you go?" Why? That uh, answer very simple. Because on that the last uh, two seven and three at that time, I climbed the Mount Everest. Uh, the age that was 52. 52. That is the oldest, oldest age to climb the Mount Everest in China. That the record. And even that uh, after that uh, seven, seven years, that they caught still kept that uh, 52 year old. And uh, 2010, that year, my age was 59. And my brother, younger three years than me. What is the meaning? He went, broke my record. The oldest age <laughs> climbing the Mount Everest. Then, what is the meaning? The, the meaning, please, let me keep the break, breaking record for 20 minutes. <laughs> what uh, do you think? Your answer, man, you think something like me. When your young brother ask that, uh, ask the dad, do you agree that? Yes or no? Yes. Maybe loud. Yes or no? Yes. 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 That's not easy. Say yes. Why? I wish I could agree with, agree with his uh, asked. But that's very, very difficult because at the training, uh, my young brother was always 40 minutes slower than I was. <laughs> If I let him stay at the peak for 20 minutes before I attend the summit, it meant that I could have to wait for an hour. In that high attitude situation, that was very challenging and dangerous. The next morning, I felt the I left the base camp. On the way, I often said, uh, go back, look for my young brother. But I never see his uh, behavior. Never see he appear. So I asked, please, quickly, let me see you. I went with 
for you 20 minutes, even half hour, that's okay. But nearly the summit, I didn't find him. And then when I prepared climbing on the summit, when I up my head, I suddenly find a person ahead of me. <laughs> that my young brother. That uh, that is Wang Jian. And uh, standing the summit with a proud smile and his arm around his wrist. That uh, big surprise. How could he possible get ahead of me? I asked myself. I would have noticed if he had overpassed me, but I haven't seen him. And of course, I was exhausted and uh, lack oxygen. Maybe I, I miss him when he passed over me. So when we went down back to Kent's camp, Kent, Kent, uh, base camp, camp, I asked me, when did you pass over me? He, his the answer very simple. He said, I, I beginning more earlier an hour than you. <laughs> that my lesson from this story is there is no easy way. Any achievement comes with heart or fault. That's the second story. Third story that the who admire who. Since uh, 2010, that uh, we all together climb on the summit uh, Mount Everest, uh, I certainly fa find uh, some attitude for my young brother that change. Normally, when someone asked uh, my young brother, who you, uh, who you admired? He always an answered my older brother, that Wang Shi. But uh, since uh, 2010, someone asked that the same questions, and maybe they already uh, knew him answer. Say maybe that's uh, Wang Shi, then the Wang Jian, that uh, said. Why I admire him? Why I admire him? First, uh, that uh, Wang Shi is a very successful entrepreneur. Me too. He climbed the success, climbed the successful, climbed the Mount Everest. Also me too. But I am a scientist. He is not. <laughs> he is not. So that's the, uh, that's the 2010. That uh, next year, 2011, I went to Harvard as visiting scholar. And the uh, time passed, uh, how passed uh, nearly five years. And now we together that uh, go to the UW. And uh, I don't know what if you ask, ask him who you admire, what uh, 
he answered now. So that's uh, but uh, that's a very short story. But I think as the uh, brothers, that uh, each other, that uh, something very close, some very not. Uh, I want to say that the last story that uh, adapt. That uh, story beginning happened in that 2007. 2007 and 2005, that we went across uh, Lobno. 2005, 2007. Five. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, we, Wang Jian and uh, his uh, CEO, right? BGS CEO, that uh, Wang Jun, we together that went across the Lobno in, in 2005. That extreme temperature that year almost killed both of us. When we got back, I convinced him to leave the Chinese Academy of Science and started his own business. He was think of relocating in Suzhou, but I invited him to move to Shenzhen and create his own business there. So I promised, I promised to provide 10,000 square meters of a property space to his company, BGI, for charge free. But when his company removed to Shenzhen, he asked for 30,000 square meters of space. And I permit him that for charge for free, only for use three years. But his new, that um, let me permit that at least five years. So that uh, I reviewed that. I reviewed that. That uh, 2007, 2008, and uh, 2008, and uh, seven years passed, and the BGI uh, very successful as the business. And uh, then maybe later, my brother will explain what's his feeling about me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, that uh, my brother and me, that uh, us in China, us a uh, success, success man. My view is that for man, a success starts at the age of 50. An exciting success really starts at 60. I reached the mountain Everest at the age of 52 and went to Harvard at 60. I came to Seattle at the age of first time at the 62. That means when I 52, I climbed the Mount Everest. Then I went down back to Beijing, I say, why I say that? As a success, successful, success man that uh, only at 50 year old, only beginning, because that 52, that, uh, that uh, in China admired me that the reason that you are old, you were oldest man, climbing Mount Everest. I don't want to accept that. I think that not old, right? 52. So I think that as the uh, man success, the 50, 
50 years old on the beginning. Right, and um, 59, and climbing the mountain, Everest, uh, six times. And uh, 62, I went uh, first visit uh, Seattle. And uh, past the two years, I failed. Two years, these two years for me, very, very, that, uh, very, very special. Very special. What a special only two days ago I was accepted as the fellowship in the University of Cambridge. So I say, as the, uh, a man that's very, very successful at uh, 60 years old on the beginning. That's what I mean. I mean it. And uh, people ask me, what would have happened if you came to Seattle 30 years sooner? Right? Because you're, you're, you're 62. That year old, you uh, visited uh, Seattle. Maybe that means you're too late, right? If you 30 years earlier, what will happen? Well, the time I can really not go back. But we all know that the city of Shenzhen is only 35 years old. So that is a lot of we can expect for the next 30 years of the Shenzhen. Because now, Shenzhen contract relationship between Shenzhen and Seattle as sisters that cities. What I wanted to say as the title that uh, Brotherhood. Traditional society in China was organized around the bloodness or geographic origins. But modern social relationships are definite by value-based identities. Wang Jian and I are not related. My family is from Anhui and Wang Jian's is from Hunan. We admire each other because we are both outdoor adventurers and share common values respecting the nature. Shenzhen is an immigrant city. Entrepreneurs in Shenzhen are not burdened with an identity based on bloodness or geographic origins. Instead, they really run around the values for the market. Rules and uh, fairness, I believe, this value-based brotherhood will define, define the new identity of the Chinese entrepreneurs and uh, reshape the future Chinese society. Thanks. And now, thank you, give, give me the Chinese student, give me a chance to speak in English. <laughs> and, and now, I can, I can speak in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> <笑>我們今天還來了一個團啊,是深圳的企業家,他們來了有有將近將近70位,他們在裡面。剛才那就是其中一位,呃希望我將幾句中文,當然那我會很樂意接受,是吧?你的audience,啊,啊delegation,都
，希望我讲什么呢？就是意思，刚才我讲那些你们都没听懂是吧？呃，好吧，呃，我我想，我今天这个题目呢，我既然讲的是兄弟啊，实际上兄弟情，那是不是？实际上我们今天呢，还有一位真正的老大也来了，我们是三兄弟，看是不是这样？我先把这个年轻于我那位兄弟请上来，让他讲两句，完了之后呢，再请哎我们。就我的长兄，再请他来讲几句，好不好？好。OK。Need me translator in English? OK. Please, please, my young brother. So after him, it's not easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Wang Jian, and 25 years ago, I was a, a, a postdoc in here, just a, a hundred meters away from here, in the medical school, in the Department of Pathology. And I tried a couple times to climb uh, Rainier, I never got it to the top. <laughs> and then I found an easy way to climb the, the Everest because there's commercial team. <laughs> so uh, it's a very interesting thing. So it's, uh, I was a scientist once as a businessman. How we too become my brothers, there's uh, some kind of a story behind that. <laughs> he never tell you guys about the real story. <laughs> and it's sort of, uh, uh, and he was a big boss in China uh, for the business. He's the uh, biggest real estate companies. The boss he created for uh, 30 years, from started from nothing, and become the the biggest one. So I was a uh, that time I was in Chinese Academy of Science and doing uh, uh, most time I uh, doing the research, but uh, in <coughs> but I just try to remember how difficult it to climb the uh, Rainier. And those guys are uh, easy to climb all the mountains around the Tibet and Xinjiang, and uh, I saw that, so I should join them. But uh, the, most of the mountain rainier in China are, are businessmen. I'm the scientist, I don't have money, I don't have time to go with them. <laughs> so, so, but uh, I just try to see if we can follow to catch up with them. So, as, as he said, uh, we climbed a couple mountains together. Uh, but that time, I tried to, uh, to break his records. I asked him to wait for me. <laughs> but he just simply refused. He said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I have some say some bad things for him. <laughs> So when I got there and he come over, he, he finally, 20 minutes, 25 minutes actually, behind me. <laughs> Even I studied earlier. So, so he got to the top, he asked me to take a picture for him. You know, he take off his goggle, sit there like this. <laughs> and the, there's big problem, James, you know. And he got, uh, uh, what's called a Xue Ma, how to translate that? Yeah, uh, snow. <laughs> so, and he had big trouble to win down because he cannot see. Just look at this. <laughs> Someone has to 
to, to, to help him. And this is, so this is something I never tried. You have to be careful. You have to follow the nature uh, laws. You cannot just show your host, host strong. But I learned a lot of things from him to be a, at that time, another bad thing for him. And I was closely to help him translate every uh, order from our, the, the, the guy, the, 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 the team. We are the international team. All the guide, all, all the team leaders are from the, the, the uh, from New Zealand and from states. So that time he cannot speak English. So only five years he practiced and practiced even in the public. <laughs> uh, two days ago, oh, one day ago, I was in, uh, in Cambridge, UK with him. He got a, a scholarship. Uh, he was named as a, a fellow of uh, what's called the, the, the William Scholar from the uh, Pembroke, Pembroke, right? The Pembroke. And there was a famous university and a famous college, and he was a fellow. So I was getting a little bit generous. Five years ago, he needed a translator, and five years later, he became a fellow of the famous university. It's unbelievable. So, so we're very closely and uh, help each other. He convinced me to quit a, a government job to go. <laughs> we, in China, we call it Xiaohai. How to say that? <laughs> How to say that? <laughs> OK. <laughs> so I quit a, a the, the government job uh, created BGI, and the BGI was the Chinese name called Huada. You know what Huada means? You done, right? <laughs> <laughs> because that time when I was in the University of Washington, the Genome Center was the best one in the States, also in the world. So, so a bunch of Chinese guys, we were together, we, we sort of we showed the copy and the paste that to move this whole genome center from Seattle to Beijing. And then we got permission from the University of Washington, also get the permission from the NIH, from the US government. And then we went back to China, created the, 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 the genome center in, in the Chinese Academy of Science. And then finally we joined the with uh, the professor uh, Mela Olsen. He was a director of the Genome Center in Udan. And he helped us apply the, for the 1% of the Human Genome Project. And um, we successfully finished our job. And uh, now we become the largest the Genome Center. Last year and long, we had 49 nature and science publication. Probably we rank the number two uh, institute in China for the nature and science publications. And also we... <laughs> And also, we are the, 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 the only one private institute in China and doing basic research. And also, we, it's very difficult for us to get uh, public funding. So we had to uh, work hard to make, to make funding and make money for ourselves to support our basic research. So, so lots of things I learned from Wang Si and how to make money. 
and <laughs> he make a lots of money and uh, and he donated almost his half salary for the uh, 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 what's called a, a, a charity things and uh, and they give away his salary to help the poor and uh, to 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 do the uh, 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 environmental things so all 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 of the good things. And uh, I think uh, I was a, I tried to copy from him, but I cannot. So I decided I use our own money to support our basic research. So we are a little bit strange in mainland China because no private institute in China doing any basic research. So in China, they called us BGI, the troublemaker. And <laughs> so uh, my personal, so most of the time I mean, when climbing with them, and I cannot say I'm just mountaineering. I have to say I, I have my research project going on. I call myself major in high altitude medicine. I pretend I'm doing the serious research in the mountain. <laughs> uh, I take the, the ultrasound uh, machines and also the, the centrifuges and, uh, and the liquid nitrogen, all this stuff to the, to the 7,000 meters and to take people's bluff. <laughs> so we got a few good publications. One is uh, nature, one is in the science. So I'm so proud that as a, a scientist, I'm finishing my job, I'm climbing the mountain, and uh, get the good publications. Now we started making money. So that most of the things I learned from one So we help each other, and also we we joke to each other, and we we we. We learn each other, and we also compete each other. And so this our story. This is also, as he said, is brother for, but the real brother, he would like to say he's our father. It's not all the brothers. Now it's your turn, old big Jim. Yeah. <laughs> you come over to give a few sentences. Yeah. You can go there. Jim is the first one, uh, America, first one, America climbing the Mount Everest. That was 90s. 63. 63. Now he's 86 years old. <laughs> so it's my turn to talk for a little bit here. Um, I'm Happy to have my wife, Diane Roberts, of 40 years adventure here. And my son, Joss Whitaker, who's getting an archaeology PhD here at the University of Washington. <laughs> the thing I'd like to talk about is not 1963, when we had to walk 185 miles from Kathmandu to the base of Everest. 185 miles took us a month. We were there for three more months. Uh, we lost one of the team in the ice fall. Uh, four climbers got trapped coming off the mountain, snow blind and dark, spent the night out. They survived. It's amazing. They lost their toes, some fingers, and so forth. That's not the expedition I want to talk about <laughs> because none of you were alive then, right? You were all younger <laughs> and not born, maybe, most of you. But in 1990, we took a team of Chinese, Soviets, and Americans, people that were not getting along at the time. And we said, mountaineers, let's pull these people together, climbers, and have a summit on summits. We'll demonstrate to the world what could be done through peace, friendship, cooperation, working together. It, it was wonderful. 
We brought the Soviets over. They were Soviets then, not Russians. We brought the Soviets over into China. The Chinese said, yes, uh, come, uh, bring your friends. And, uh, but we've not had Soviets in our country for 30 years. I said, I know, good opportunity for world peace, good opportunity. <laughs> and so we all assembled uh, at Chomolong Chom Mount Everest at the base camp, Soviets, Chinese, and Americans, 10 from each country, 10 Chinese Tibetans, because we had both in the party, climbers. And how could we communicate? We had five climbers from each country, then we had to have a doctor from each country, because we didn't want to get acupunctured. <laughs> and so we each had a doctor, we each had an interpreter, because we couldn't talk the language. We each had, we all had to eat the same food. That was quite a shock. We got, okay, and so we had a deputy leader, so we had five climbers in, the, in each team and five support people, the interpreter, doctor, so, so there were 10 from each country, five climbers, five others, and we said there must be one woman at least climber on the team. So we had four men and one woman climber. So here we were to go up together, trusting our lives to each other, demonstrating what could be done to the world. This is Earth Day today, April 22nd. 25 years ago, we were all at base camp at 18,000 feet on Everest. 25 years ago today. This morning at 4 o'clock, my deputy leader here, Warren Thompson, is somewhere over there. There's Warren Thompson, deputy leader of the team. <laughs> okay, now picture this. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. We're in a little tent. The wind's blowing. It's probably 20 below zero. Uh, we've got a little Coleman lamp going there. No heat. We're sitting there. We've got a huge satellite dish outside, okay? And we've got a telephone, a telephone in the tent and a satellite dish. This was 25 years ago, before anybody had a cell phone, okay? We're sitting in that tent, and the telephone rings at 4 o'clock in the morning, 25 years ago today. I pick up the phone, and the other end says, Mr. Whitaker? I say, yes. He said, we have President Bush on the line for you. <laughs> the first one, the first Bush, the first Bush. <laughs> I said, hello. He said, hello, Jim. What you're doing for the world is a wonderful thing. Look, you're cleaning up the planet because it was Earth Day and we went over to climb the mountain and to clean the planet. We wanted a safe and clean world. So he said, what you're doing is wonderful and everything else. So we hung up, said, great, thank you, Mr. President. The Soviet team called Gorbachev and talked to Gorbachev and the Chinese team called Li Ping and talked to Li Ping. Li Ping. All of us. And what did we do? We put the route up. There were 15 climbers. We broke every record on the mountain. The Guinness Book of World Records wrote it up as the most successful climb in Everest history. We put 20 people, 20 Chinese, Soviets, and Americans on the top of Mount Everest over a period of four days. 20 people. And we say, you only had 15 climbers. We put the base camp cook up. We put an interpreter up. One doctor went up. <laughs> we went up that mountain. I think the God said, what they are doing is good for the world. And let's let them climb that mountain. The first Soviet woman to climb stood on the summit, said, I stand on the top of this mountain for all the women in the world. Let there be no borders on this planet. She said, let's make a safe and clean world for our children and for their children and their children and their children. A clean world? We came off the mountain, Chinese, Soviets, Americans, 
hauling garbage that had been left on the mountain. This was 1990. We're hauling garbage. Two tons of garbage we took off of Mount Everest. Two tons of garbage we took off of Mount Everest and buried at base camp. When we left that camp, uh, three months later, it was uh, on the China side. It was at the Rongbuk, for the Rongbuk Glacier. Uh, when we left that mountain, uh, we left it and it looked like no one had been there before. There was not a candy bar wrapper. There was not a tin can. There was nothing left. When we left, it looked like no one had ever been there before. We left a clean mountain and we cleaned the world off from the top down. And that's what we should do. Okay, so that's it. This is the 25th anniversary of that climb. We're gonna celebrate it. We've got uh, some celebration tap coming. Uh, our Chinese friends are coming over. They're locating as many of the team members that are still alive. We've got nine Soviet team members coming over. We're gonna go up on Mount Rainier. We're gonna have a beer. <laughs> Rainier beer, huh? <laughs> and slap each other on the back and have fun and get together and, and uh, remember that uh, this is a gorgeous and a beautiful planet, that we're lucky to be here and that uh, it's good that we can work together, that we're friends, uh, everyone is friends and work together to make a better world for our children and their children. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, if, if I can ask you to stay up here, and Wang Chu and Wang Jian, if I can ask you to join me back up here for just a minute. I think you'll all agree we've had an amazing evening with three remarkable gentlemen uh, who've dedicated themselves uh, to success in many, many fields and are an inspiration uh, to all of us. I want to thank all of you for coming. I especially want to thank Jennifer Schmidt for making all of this actually happen. Thank you so very much. And I believe now our Chinese student volunteers who've helped with all the organization have a, a couple small mementos for each of you. So let me join, please join me in thanking all of our speakers for a truly inspiring presentation.